This is our first video for Unit 4. And Unit 4 is going to teach us all about chemical reactions, just very pretty basic stuff. Um, but we are going to be balancing reactions and equations. So that is really going to be the biggest thing that we're going to be doing in Unit 4. So in order to kind of get us kind of primed for these chemical reactions, we are going to have a little bit of an introduction here in section 4.1. And this information is stuff that I'm sure that you have known for a very long time, but this is a really good um, kind of refresher course for us uh, in what to look for for a chemical reaction. So before we get into the chemical reactions, let's talk a little bit about physical changes and how they are not chemical reactions. So a physical change can involve a change in state, like uh, going from a liquid to a gas. So something boiling or vaporizing that is uh, going to be, that's going to involve a transfer in energy, but uh, that doesn't mean that the molecules or the atoms that any sort of bond is forming or breaking. That's really what is going to define a chemical reaction. Okay, but in this case, it's not a bond that is breaking or forming. It's actually the intermolecular forces that are going to be uh, altered. Okay, and in, in order to do that, uh, an input of energy or um, an output of energy will be necessary. Okay, um, so we can make a mixture by combining separate substances uh, or we can go the opposite direction and we can actually separate a mixture through some of the methods that we talked about before, such as chromatography or filtration, uh, two things that we have done, or distillation, which is something that I would certainly like to do at some point this year. Okay, but for a chemical reaction to occur, we have to start with at least one substance. And in a lot of cases, it, it's actually going to be several substances. But we're going to start with something and then we're going to end with something different. Okay, so it's either something that is occurring between these two, few substances or perhaps uh, it, it is a larger substance that may be breaking down into uh, something different as well. So the big thing is that what we start with is not going to be what we end with in terms of molecules or atoms or ions or uh, whatever constituents uh, we might be talking about. So if we are looking for a chemical reaction, looking for evidence of a chemical reaction happening, um, some really good indicators and things that we have definitely seen before um, is going to be the production of heat or light. I mean, the first thing that we did this year, putting those effervescent tabs in water, um, that certainly um, showed us and not a production of heat, but actually a reaction in which heat was drawn in and absorbed into the system. Um, but the formation of a gas, that's a really good indicator, uh, especially if we're looking in a liquid, that's really easy to see when a gas is forming. Uh, the formation of a precipitate, so putting a couple of solutions that have um, dissolved substances within them. Uh, but when we put them together, there may be a reaction that happens between those dissolved substances and then they precipitate. Um, so they go from being aqueous to actually being um, solid and, and coming out of the solution. Um, color changes can also indicate a chemical reaction as well. Okay, so if you are asked to look for a chemical reaction um, anytime that you are combining something or heating something up, then uh, these things can be the evidence that you are looking for. And that is all for 4.1. So very quick lesson, um, but 
despite the fact that it is quick and relatively simple, these concepts right here, these chemical, these evidence is of chemical changes are super, super important. So make sure that you know these. Okay, and that's it.